If we could just decide the remainder of this 2016 presidential election using nerve, I'm pretty sure we would see who would go the limit for America. Nerve. Nerve is the newest film starring Emma Roberts and Dave Franco in which they find themselves playing this new secret online game based in New York called Nerve. It's essentially a crowd-driven game of truth or dare without the truth. Participants are given the option to be a watcher or a player, and if you choose to be a player, you have the opportunity to win large sums of money as long as you continue to complete the dares that the watchers are giving you. What makes this movie so suspenseful and thrilling is just how progressively dangerous and illegal that the dares inevitably become. Emma Roberts plays V, who's this clichely goody two-shoes girl that wants to show everybody that she can take risks and be adventurous. Eventually, the watchers want her to pair up with Dave Franco, who plays Ian, this archetypal bad boy with some hidden agenda. Now, both Emma Roberts and Dave Franco worked really well together. Their performances were both solid, and you can clearly see they have on-screen chemistry. Plus, they're both just really charismatic and good to look at. I mean, let's be honest. Although the side characters aren't as involved as I would have liked, for the most part, most of the supporting cast is really solid. I mean, heck, even Machine Gun Kelly was pretty decent in this. I mean, that's saying something. And although they both have bit parts, I really enjoyed seeing Kimiko Glenn and Samira Wiley from Orange is the New Black in this. Samira Wiley is easily a standout on my list of actors to watch. I just love watching this girl perform, regardless of how big her role is. Plus, I just finished season four of Orange is the New Black, so, you know, my heart still hurts a little bit. This is actually one of the few movies that I was excited for this year because it just looked like it was going to be a lot of fun to watch. And hey, it is. Is this movie completely original? No, not really. But it was executed well enough and is directly relevant to this age of social media and technology. I ended up enjoying this movie a lot more than I was anticipating. I love thriller movies that just have you on the edge of your seat. And there were multiple moments in this movie that had my heart thumping and my cheeks clenching. And I'm not talking about these. It was just a ton of fun to watch these dares go from innocent to progressively more dangerous and outrageous as the movie went on. There were multiple moments where I was sitting there wondering what I would do in these situations. In all honesty, if this game existed in real life, I would probably be a watcher. Simply because if this game was real and real people were playing it, things would get really weird and really gross and really fetishy really fast. It would basically just become a more monetized version of Omegle, let's be honest. A lot of the tension does come from the really quick editing and fairly decent pacing in this movie. This movie felt decent in length, although there were a lot of things that should have been expanded upon that would have made the story even more interesting. The issue with this is that there are a lot of glaring plot holes and just a lot of things that just do not make sense in this movie like almost instantly. One minor detail that drove me freaking insane at the beginning of this movie was that you see Emma Roberts on her MacBook Pro and then she starts touching the screen as if MacBook Pros have touch screens. Macs don't have touch screens, my friend. We all know this. Also, this movie was shot relatively well throughout. At least it was shot effectively enough for a young adult movie. However, they tried to establish this really weird aesthetic using a bunch of neon lights in the most random places that just didn't really fit. It's clear that they're just trying to attract these younger audiences with bright colors, but it serves no real purpose to the plot or the overall tone. Also, even though all of the songs and music that are used in this movie are good in their own right, they just felt really out of place and Honestly, just in your face. Usually whenever a movie doesn't have an original score and they try to use mainstream music, the music is just used to give that movie the extra oomph that it needs. But in this, all the music is just so noticeable during the most inappropriate times where they feel like they're trying to make you feel something, but they just don't know how to show it. So they pick a song that will hopefully make you relate. It got to the point where I was paying more attention to the music and the weird color palette than the actual dramatic or emotional scenes that were going on screen. And when I say plot holes, I'm not talking about these little plot holes that could be easily glazed over in the movie, it would be fine. No, I'm talking about some real major plot holes with the game nerve itself. At first, the game seems at least somewhat believable because you're willing to suspend your disbelief enough to go on for this ride. But as the movie goes on and more information gets revealed about the game, you realize that the essential information that needs to be there to make this game seem as believable as possible is just not there. I mean, simple things such as who and where did this game come from and how on earth are police not noticing that this game is a thing when people are making money off of it, people are streaming it all over the internet, and people are dying. The major issue I had with this movie was honestly the entire last act. I was having a super fun time seeing all these crazy dares and seeing how the watchers can manipulate the players to eventually get tied into another player's game. It was just a concept that was so interesting to me. But at no moment's notice, the movie decides to turn on a dime, get serious, and bring up issues of cyberbullying and digital privacy. It tries to wrap everything up as quickly as possible as if they tried to add this important message at the very last minute. But what this movie needed to do throughout and at the end was provide some more information and backstory on specific characters, the game itself, and honestly even give us some 
foreshadowing on what's to come for the two leads. Not that there needs to be a sequel for this movie at all, but I can certainly seeing it happen just so they can at least expand upon what they didn't talk about in this one. There needs to be some type of identity to ties to the entity that is the game Nerve to add some purposeful threat. But we're never given that. But guys, Nerve is an adrenaline-packed, seat-gripping movie that will certainly be enjoyable to watch, especially with a group of friends. This will no doubt spark some interesting conversations within friend groups, and that's part of the fun. It's fun, kind of fresh, and directly relatable. And for all these reasons, I'm going to give Nerve a 7 out of 10. So Nerve, have you seen it? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. And while you're at it, let me know how much money it would take for you to do an illegal dare. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. It truly does mean a lot. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like. And if you want to see my upcoming movie reviews and you want to stick around, well, hey, hit subscribe. Catch you in the next one.